So this is the bag sort video for the Roquet first bag. And so now we're going to crack open our Roquet bag. And inside we have obviously the booklet with any adjustments that need to be made. And then there's the K1 through 6, K7 through 13. And there seems to be one four and a half inch square and the lattice and cornerstones. So I'm going to set these two aside and we're going to focus on this. For the four and a half inch square, I'm going to go back to the notes and there you're going to see that the four and a half inch square is used in K7. So I'm going to mark that with, I'm going to mark that and then I'm going to put it aside with the K7 to 13 bag. So we'll set that aside with the rest of it. The next thing I do is I go through the booklet and make sure that I mark in the book which ones are modified. So we've got all these different modifications and that kind of fun thing here. And there's a note on K1 that finds find a Deer Stitches letter on the back page. And this is from Jess. So it talks about different places to put fabric and things like that. So it's just a fun little addition. So I'm going to go through my book here and label which ones, label the whole row of which ones are modified. So we've got K1 and 2, and I'm just going to go through here and put EPP modified on each one. So now that I've gone through my entire booklet and marked all of my blocks that are modified, I can get started with the layout. So every time I come across something with that says modified, I'm going to go into the booklet and use that to lay out my actual pieces. The only blocks that are not modified in this row are 4 and 5 and 12. Everything else is going to be worked out from this booklet. So, K1. We have the borders have been removed. So we're going to take this, and the other, oh, and this is one piece here. So I'm going to take my bag, I'm going to dump it out. And we're going to go through this together. What I normally do as I lay out this stuff is I will group them into shapes. So this blocks are too small and they are not the same size, but any, any squares, that way when I go to the next block, I can just go to the square pile and not have to dig. And then we have little diamonds. And there's a bunch of the triangles, which might be, I always line the triangles up on the edges. It's just easier to see. So this is the correct size. And I'm going to actually use this, set this aside and use this to measure. Sometimes triangles are so very, very close that it's difficult to tell. Larger pieces I'm going to put in a different pile. And I still have a piece in my bag, so I'll put that in the squares. The big, big pieces over here. Alright, so here's another triangle. It's obviously too small. So I'll start a triangle pile. And then my large pieces again. There's a bunch of diamonds for something in this row, or in this section. And then there's a bunch of these, so I'll stick those in another pile. And I'll probably put those over here just because. So this is, you know, the first time you get into this thing, it's a matter of just kind of organizing it. And as you go, you pick out what you think is right. And this is why it is... This, is, this will save you time in the bag sort. Next, I'm going to set those triangles separately. And there seems to be a lot of these little stick things. Alright, and then we have rectangles. That's nowhere near the right size. Which I'm going to stick with the squares. And then some bigger squares, which are too big. More squares. That's not the right size either. Maybe I will separate these. Sometimes I'll group stuff together 
based on general shape. Okay, so there's a second one. And I'm looking for a total of eight of those. And this is where my stiletto comes in so I can place them easier. So there's a lot of little squares. I'm assuming a lot of these are for K2 because K2 is all just all squares. But this way I can find everything. Okay, so we have another triangle. Yep, that's the right size. And see, the other thing is this gets kind of fluffy. So it can be hard, you know, you can shift your pieces real easily. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to only use this paper so it doesn't have as much bulk. I'll just do, do it on this paper and try to squish it as much as possible. This will eliminate the, well, it won't eliminate, but it will reduce the puffy. So I'm just going to go through here and sort all these pieces and find these squares. Okay, so here's a square. So now I've got something to reference for the rest of these squares. So now I've got all of my K1 pieces laid out on the block. And I'm going to take my fine point Sharpie, or my ultra fine point Sharpie, whatever. And I'm going to mark them, and I'm going to put the, the block number on each one as K1. So now all my K1 pieces are labeled with the block number, and I have to now label the focus fabric pieces. And so I'm going to look at this picture. We have the big giant rectangles are going to be focus fabric, and I'm going to label the ones that are not background with a dot. You can use whatever you want. So this one is going to be this one here, and then this end one, this one here, and this one, and this one, and then this is here, 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 and here. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I have my fabric available of what I'm going to use. A lot of my fabrics in this, in this particular colorway are annoyingly directional. So I'm going to check my K1 fabric. And this is my K1 fabric here. And of course it's directional. It's got this little bitty flower club looking thing. And so this is the top and the bottom and it would matter whatever way it goes. So I'm going to take an ink pen so that it looks different than the Sharpie and label the direction. Because once these get into the baggie, you don't, necessar you don't necessarily know which one goes where without relaying them out. So this helps save time later. All the ones with the red dots, I'm going to put arrows on. Then I can stick them in my baggie with a label and my focus fabric so that everything's in the same place. I just want to make sure I got all of them. That one back there is a background piece, I believe. Let's see. Yep, that's background. So all my red dots have an arrow with them. So now I'm going to take a sandwich baggie because they fit really nicely, put all the pieces in it, and put my focus fabric in it and move on to the K2 block. When I put my block stuff into the baggie, I dump in the pieces and then I fold the fabric in quarters. This is, a, I think this is a fat 16th. It's like nine by 11 or something. And then I'm gonna stick the fold down so that when I move around these bags, it has less of a chance of getting the paper pieces in the fabric and then go flying when I take it out. This I do, this is about a post-it note size paper, three by three. And this I like to use so not only can I see it easily, but if there's any notes that I need to do during block prep or something, which I've had to do in the past, I can write those on here so that when I go to do block assembly, everything's already in one spot. So the next block is the K2 block. And again, this is modified. So I'm going to go to the booklet. Whoops. The booklet over here, because I've taken it apart. You just want to make sure that you put it back together correctly. So I'm going to take this piece out so that I only have to deal with one paper and fold this flat. And this is pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of squares. 
which we already know that we have in this, this pile over here. So it's a matter of finding which size squares they are. And I'm assuming it's this size. And so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, and six. So I need 36 of these pieces. So I'm going to lay these out. So now all of the K2 squares are in place. And of course, I'm going to label them with K2. And then I will have them prepared to label with the focus fabrics. So now that all of my squares are labeled, I am going to label the focus fabrics and it's pretty straightforward. It's just a checkerboard pattern. So just every other one, make sure that none of the red dot pieces are touching. And I suppose if you mess one up, you just exchange it for one that's not labeled yet. Okay. And now I've got to check my fabric for directional. If you don't know which fabric you have, it's better to label for directional and not need it than to need it and not have it. So this particular fabric is a, it doesn't seem to be a directional. This is my K2 fabric. Looks like everything's just kind of willy-nilly in a small print. So I'm not going to worry about directional and I'll bag this up and move on to K3. Now we're on to K3, and K3 again is a modified block, so I'm going to use this particular um, layout. And the only difference is they took this outside border off, and the pieces then are a little bigger. So it's just a matter of finding the squares that fit, which are this size. And I'll make sure that I line each one up, because there may be some that are very, very close, but it doesn't seem to be the case. And then I'll take the, the bars rectangles that are coinciding with the right size and lay all those out as well. So as I'm laying these out, I came across an interesting little note. The pieces here are all, all these squares are exactly the same size, but when I go to put this on the K3 um, diagram, this piece seems to be a little longer here. So there seems to be some kind of a printing error or something. So I'm just going to stick these pieces here. And then I think, I suspect that this, yeah, because this looks smaller this way. So it all works itself out. But just know that the pieces themselves are the correct size. The diagram's a little off. So when I'm lining this up, with these pieces on the sides here. Yep, all of these, as long as the paper pieces line up to themselves, then any discrepancies in the diagram will not have an effect on your final result. So yep, this is, so yeah, this section, this line right here must just be a little too low because this looks like it's longer this way than that way and these are longer this way than that way, so. I will send a note to them just to make make it aware, make them aware of that if they aren't already. And as you can tell with that with those placement, it goes right back to even with the rest of the block. So the other thing is is this line seems to be missing. So I am going to place these rectangles and that way I can tell with the blocks, because the rectangles are all the same size too. So there should be a line here for a square. And then the rest of this falls into place. And of course, the next thing I'm going to do is label all of my pieces with K3. And then I'll be ready to label the focus fabrics. Now my pieces are all labeled with the K3. Now it's just a matter of labeling the focus fabrics. So I will scoot this so I can see the picture here. And it looks like all of these squares, they shifted while I was labeling them a little bit. 
but all these squares in the X are background. Everything else is not. So in the middle here, I'm going to use these uh, ones that surround the center, our focus fabric, and then the rectangles are focus fabrics as well. So let's label those. And then the next step, of course, is to check whether or not my fabric is directional. And I can already tell you that yes, it is. And this is a rather large print. Again, I didn't pick these fabrics. They came in a block of the month selection. Excuse me, selection. So this has, you want to not just check the flowers, you want to check the background. So this is actually, there's three little dots and an arrow that's on the 45 degrees. So it's going to matter exactly which way these go, regardless of which way the flowers are pointed. So this is going to be an interesting placement at block prep. So in the meantime, I'm going to mark these with an arrow to indicate which direction is up for these blocks that have the red dots. And then I will bag this into my K3 baggie with my focus fabrics. Next in line is K4, and K4 is one of the non-modified blocks, so we're going to lay out the pieces directly on the Dear Jane book. Obviously, the largest square is going to be the center of this, and then it's just a matter of finding the triangles. The big triangles shouldn't be that difficult because there are some that are larger in this bag, but they're easy to tell apart. So the four corners, and then these eight other pieces will be laid out. You just want to verify those sizes so I'll be able to now have a reference point for each one of these that I come across. And then there's uh, that should be the same size as these. So let's find out here. Yep, that's the same size. So that means that there will be 12 of these instead of eight. So I will work on laying these out and getting them in place. So I've got all of the K4 parts laid out and again we're going to label these with the block number and then we'll be prepared to label the focus fabric and direction. So all of these are labeled. Now it's just a matter of labeling the focus fabric pieces, which in this case is everything except these triangles surrounding the middle. So the middle and then the outside triangles are the only focus fabric pieces. And then I have to check for directional on my fabric, which is obviously directional. And you'll see, you know, big giant stripes. Again, a big scale that I don't really know what I'm going to have, how I'm going to handle that when I get to it, but. It all usually works itself out. So I'm going to bag this up and move on to K5. And before I bag this up, I'm going to mark my directional. Just forgot to do that. Now K5 is also a not modified block, so you're going to work on it from the book. And there are four big squares that are obviously for K5. The only other block that's left is K6, so you've got these two pieces, and then these two pieces are going to go underneath the pieced diamonds. I'm going to set these to the side here. I'll set these actually down here in K6. And then the diamonds, there should be eight of them, and they're going to fit right here. It looks like they're not quite exactly the same size as the drawing, but as long as they form a diamond when they are assembled, it's not going to matter because on the assembly. So yes, these diamonds are slightly smaller than the drawing, which is fine. Just make sure that when you're placing these, you're going to piece the diamond and then you're going to center it in the block. And that will be in the block assembly video for the K5 block. So now it's just a matter of labeling and these two are going to be behind the diamond so they're not going to be 
focus fabric. They're going to be background. So I'm going to label these and put these in my baggie, set them aside. These I'm going to label and then mark as focus fabric with my red Sharpie, my big thick, my normal sized, I guess this would be fine point and this would be ultra fine point. And then it's just a matter of labeling these and labeling which ones are focus fabric and this is really going to matter which one is which because yeah well actually they're all the same size so if you do mess up you can reorganize it so this is the focus fabric pieces and the same thing so you got basically a line going from corner to corner of the big block of the focus fabric diamonds okay five and then I move my finger a little bit. You need to hold down the block, the pieces somehow when you're writing down, otherwise they start sliding around. And then dot and dot. My K5 fabric is somewhere here. And you wouldn't think that a fabric like this is directional, but it is from this, okay, so you have this. These little loops are little ovals. Top to bottom, or up and down, it's not going to matter if you flip them. But side to, or you know, if you turn it 90 degrees, that's going to matter. So I'm going to label my directional for this fabric. I'm going to label it with a double arrow because my fabric is what I classify as 180 directional. So it's, if it's 180 degrees from each other, it's fine, but if it's 90 degrees off, then it looks different. The diamonds are a little bit of a, this is going to be an interesting little thing. I'm going to try to line up my arrow with this line here, which is kind of tricky. So come, assemble, or come block prep and laying this on the fabric, that should be intriguing to see if I can line it up with this. I may come up with a different solution at that time. We, I don't know. So... We will cover that during block prep. So that's my K5. Don't forget to put these other two that you labeled in your baggie and on to K6. Now we come to K6, which is the last block in the bag, which means all other pieces that are left are for K6. If for some reason you have extra pieces, then either you missed something or there's an extra piece. I haven't had problems with that in the past, but anyway. So, this is a modified block. This is going to work out of the booklet. And all of these little rectangle pieces go in groups of three. So I'm going to line those up like little railroads. And then I've got the large triangles, the little triangles, and the center square. So I will get to putting these in place. So I've got all of my K6 pieces in place. It's just a matter of labeling them like always. And then I will be ready to mark my focus fabrics. Now that they're labeled, I can mark my focus fabrics and this little bit of this border has been removed, so we're going to ignore that. And you've got each center th the, of the three rails pairs, the center one is going to be background. So each of the outside ones are going to be the focus fabric. So I'm going to mark each one of those. And then the triangles complete the little box around that center rail and then of course the center and these are background. Last thing to do is check for directional and this is the kind of thing that really confuses me and then once I get to assembly it makes sense. If you look real carefully on this fabric you can see these little vines. All the leaves are pointing up like the sun is up here so if I turn it sideways, it looks like it's crawling to either way. But this is a definitely a directional fabric that 
a lot of times I have mistaken for a non-directional fabric. And then when I come to assembly, all the leaves don't line up right because I didn't realize that. So I'm going to classify this as directional and I'm going to mark my pieces accordingly. In this situation, I'm going to make my directional fabric radiate out from the center, which means on the corners here, my fabric is my directional is going to be pointing out on these triangles, which that's a new thing. This one is going to point up just because then it's, you know, pretty or something. But each one of these is going to be radiating out from the center so that now I know. So I've got one, two, three, four corners, a pair of these and the center marked, and I can bag the, this up and this finally completes the K1 through K6 bag sort.